might again today on another very, very stiff law. Chances of getting fish off this one again are very slim. So um, I've been, mostly of late, I've been fishing really difficult law uh, that are unlikely to produce a fish, or at least that you're very lucky if you can get them to produce a fish. Uh, and part of that is I'm trying to crack and see if I can work out any way of getting the fish to come up to the fly. And really the answer is you need to use a worm or a spinner. <laughs> uh, but, and even then. Um, but nonetheless, it's a day out and a bit of an experiment. And I'm interested to see how the results turn out, you know, whether I even see a fish for the day. Uh, which I think is fairly unlikely. But, on the other hand, so if you're thinking, well, it's June and I should be catching hundreds of fish, <laughs> Quite reasonably I should, and if I go some places I would, but uh, I'm, I'm going to fish tricky places, and that's what I've been doing. And of course I have been catching pretty much nothing, the odd fish, but anything I've got I've worked really hard for. Nah. I can't help but think that there was a wee disturbance in there that looked like a fish moose. There's so much wave about and the, the wind and waves in so many different ways here. It's always hard to tell, you know. So, I think this thing beside me or in front of me they have been a, like a, a brock fort type thing um, at one stage and there's one out there as well don't know if you can see it but that one has a double wall and everything you can go out well when the lock's low you can walk out the causeway if you're really brave and take a look at it and it's an interesting thing to see In here, I don't know if you can see it, there is a wheelie bin. Um, now there's no houses near this law, but this is obviously blown in on a gale one night. And again, we do get wind that you can't imagine. Um, I know you're all sitting there going, oh no, I can't be the case, but honestly the wind here is is something bit different from what most people have experienced in their lives. So once it gets very windy you can't go out because there's slits and wheelie bins and caravans and all sorts of stuff flying about, you know. So I came along here to where the wheelie bin is to see if it was a good omen. I mean, I don't know if wheelie bins can be omenses, um, but maybe we'll see if this one is. It certainly wasn't a good omen for the person who had a blow away from their front of their house, you know.
I have the intermediate tip um, and I'm starting with the Barvis Crippler and the Connemara Black and then we'll work from there I would say um, I've really no idea but I might go to the fast sinker at some point and see taking the flies down a bit doesn't help because uh, again this lock drops off quite quickly I missed him. I was just too slow lifting. So I'm come. I give him a second here. So I don't think he was a big fish, mind you. But any fish off this loch is like an amazing thing. But I touched him, so he'll not come back again. I put some sun cream on my head because I forgot to bring my hat and I didn't realise it was going to be as bright as it is because it was to be miserable basically um, and uh, I thought well no point bringing a hat when I'm going to have my hoo up uh, but now well there's even wee blinkers on Yesterday actually was quite a pleasant day. Um, so there was no fishing yesterday. I was at lawn mowing and hedge cutting and things like that. Um, and I went to see Molly Dog. Me and Molly Dog took a walk. Um, and that was good. Molly Dog, Molly Dog's very clever. Um, as sheepdogs tend to be. But what amazes me is she's a great memory, a really good memory. And you do see like people who have taught um, border collies to identify all their toys by name and stuff like this. And obviously the dog's doing sort of memory stuff. But it really amazed me how good a memory she has. And I was talking to her the other day, pointing out that she's a really good memory because it's good for her. You know, when she goes to sheepdogs, good. Um, so uh, we were discussing this and she, she did say, and I fell into the trap, she did say that perhaps if she had a bonio, it would help improve her memory. So I give her a bonio and she said she thought that had helped, but she said she thought that another bonio would double the effect. Um, as you can see, I got myself into a sort of, sort of spiralling situation. So, never give a sheepdog bonios, that's my advice. At least not for their memory, because they'll outwit you. And all your bonios will be gone in 10 minutes. Even though you just bought a new box. I'm just moving along here a wee step at a time and I just sort of started in a pretty random spot. It was, I walked until I thought, I'll just start here. Uh, and I do wonder if all these rocks, you see, they're here. 
weren't like a causeway out to this this island because I do have a feeling that it's I mean not completely artificial but partially artificial uh, I'm gonna guess that maybe they built there's a big rock and whatnot out there so I'm gonna guess whoever built it built it around a rock that already existed you know fascinating though isn't it and like I said the other one behind it is definitely man-made because you can go and take a look at the walls and stuff and I wonder if you cleaned all the vegetation off this one if the walls wouldn't still be on this one as well you know So that's two fish I've missed. One that, well, I was just, wasn't fast enough. And that one, I just, I don't know. I just didn't hook him, I think. It was just the way it went, you know. I felt them though. And I saw the huge disturbance in the water. So my feeling is that it's kind of, it's banana time. Banana and a cup of tea to help console me after missing that fish, because it was a big fish. Um, and like anything else, I mean, fish are so rare as they are in this loch, so hard to get, it may be the only chance of the day, you know. I think a bit of a gust again. And it's got a bit darker again. It feels like there might be a wee shower of rain. So, uh, time to get the banana on the go, I think. And I think that's whatever I hit earlier. It's just there's a rock or a, a bit of weed or something in there. So, time for the banana. Don't know if you can hear this either. Might be, you know, I don't know what the sound's going to be like because I haven't heard any of what I've recorded in the last few weeks. So, um, and I'm burying the mic to keep it out of the rain and all that sort of stuff, you know. But uh, it's quite breezy today. Um, and it's been quite breezy for two weeks, um, which is, it's not so usual in June. Usually the Hebrides have good, calm, dry, sunny, June, July type weather. Really quite um, good weather, you know, and it's certainly sunniest Mostly they record the sunniest hours for the UK. Quite frequently they record the sunniest hours for the UK, but especially in May and June. Um, when, I think in May, it's like eight or 10 hours a day of sun they get, you know, on average. The problem with averages is, it's very rarely to get you get an average year. And this year has been an extremely dull one. So um, I'm having a wee cup of tea. I've moved two fish, one of which was a good fish, and I'm a bit disappointed not hooking him, to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, but uh, that's the way it goes. Um, and once I have my cup of tea, I'll go along and give it another wee bash. Again, I'm not especially hopeful on this lock because it is so famous for being so difficult. Um, 
But you have to keep plugging away at it, you know. Uh, the weather keeps changing every few seconds. One minute I've got the shades on. Um, the next minute uh, it's raining. Um, at the minute it's sort of breezy and overcast, but not bad. Good for tea. dropped them again. Oh, I just don't believe this. Now that was a decent fish, not a huge fish, but a decent fish. But it was on for a good wee while. Well, a second, long enough for him to put up a bit of a fight. But how he can be on that long and drop off, I just don't know. So that's three fish I've dropped. And considering how dear this loch is, that's a lot of fish hooked, you know, or well, sort of hooked. <laughs> um, And to lose all of them is uh, most disappointing. I've had my lunch now and I've come around to a slightly more exposed part of the law uh, just for a few casts here uh, and again I'll just my intention is just to bounce my way fairly rapidly along this bank and see if I can move anything. Uh, I changed the point fly from the Connemara Black to like a beadhead, it's a sort of viva type thing, I don't know, bright green tail, black marabou wing, um, just to see. And I don't intend to stand about anywhere too long, so I'll just keep moving along a bit. Barvis Crippler is still on the top. For those who are interested. Right, that'll do me here, at least for the meantime. And I'll go along another wee bit. Just want to keep moving in this wee bit of the law.
Before I go any further along, I spotted this sort of pointy bit. And I thought, oh, well, I'll get a cast off here. Um, as you can see, the wind's really catching it up here. But there does appear to be a decent wee drop off of the point. Um, and again, there's always a chance of a fish lying along that, you know. Many people would view this as a decent wave for trout. Uh, I prefer a wee bit smaller than this, to be fair. But the people who know prefer it as big as possible. Um, certainly be a decent wave for a salmon, though. Step. Just it seemed sensible to fish this out while I was while I was here, just for the sake of nipping up here, you know. I think that'll do me for a wee bounce along here. It's a good wave here. Well, probably I'll head back to where I started opposite the wee island, where I'm most moving the fish, you know, on the basis that if I was moving fish there, it's at least worth going back and having a look at it on the way past. Uh, and then I'll work my way back towards the car, probably. It's been a while since I've moved something, send that. I've had the sun for a while now, so that doesn't help my, my chances. You know, with a, a relatively cold, stiff wind and a bright sun up the law. It's, well, it never seems any good to me, you know. So I think we'll go back to our island spot. See if we can't get something out of there and then work back towards the car. So back along to this spot, cast night towards the island for a second time, uh, just because I did actually move some fish here. Maybe it might have been that just the fish came on at that period. Um, or I seem to recall that we had a bit more cloud cover at that period. And maybe it was just the bright sun has kind of put an end to it. I really don't know. But I'm going to keep a wee trot along this bank. 
Uh, and then we'll we'll work back towards the car, I think. Uh, I might fish a few places as I go along. Um, and I guess a few changes of fly might be called for now. I haven't changed fly in a while. And I haven't moved anything in a while. So it may be that something something else might be useful. What I think I'll do is it's starting to feel like time to start heading back towards the car. Um, and I haven't moved anything else along here. So maybe we're just, maybe I just had a wee lucky spot this morning when the fish were moving, which was why I moved several of them but there certainly doesn't seem to be anything moving at this stage so maybe i'll have a few casts as i go back along the bank um call it a day you know it seems to be what sounds like a plan Certainly been a shame not to get a fish, not a surprise, but just a shame to move three, was it, this morning, in fairly fast succession for this loch, and not to succeed in landing any of them. And that's a, that's a bit of a disaster, but. What can you do? It's what this loch is known for, so not landing something shouldn't be a surprise. Sometimes I make a wee record of the pH of the, of the water in the lochs I fish. And uh, this one appears to have a midgey walking about on it. But nonetheless, I'm going to give it a wee try here and just see. There we go. Uh, I mean, I expect them all to be about four. Uh, and they usually, to be fair, are about four. Um, but sometimes it's just interesting to take a wee, wee look, make a wee comparison. So. In theory, you shouldn't hold them too long because as they get old, they, they go off. And this looks to be bang on four, I would say, just exactly where I expected it. So, pH in this as well is about four, which is, is normal. <laughs> Duck, come to see me. Don't know why he's come to see me, but he came to see me. So, the pH in here is about four, just the normal for Lewis Law. Um, uh, despite the difficulty of getting fish out of it and the large fish I moved earlier. I just stopped here for a quick cast to rest the legs on the way back to the car and that's me done for the day. So I hope you enjoyed the video, tough going. Um, and no surprise not to catch any fish on this loch. But an awful shame that I didn't took the chances I got, didn't hold on to them, because um, one of those was a good fish. However, that's the way it goes, and that's part of the point in coming out to these really challenging lochs, is that 
you won't be coming home with loads of fish, but you'll be knocking your pan in for anything you do get. So uh, hopefully you'll join me in the next video and I am off to walk to the car and go home.